seven hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this. But it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization operating so join us this september 16th and 17th for what i believe will be the final money bomb that infowars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening because as mahatma gandhi famously said First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked. And in the face, we're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Go to Infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And InfoWars, which you the viewers and listeners and activists stand at the heart of, is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the InfoWar. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. So from myself, Alex Jones, and the entire InfoWars crew, we salute you. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb in defense of human liberty. That's Hillary Clinton laughing right now on the Hillary Clinton pen, Hillary for prison. It's the Hillary Clinton pen at the InfoWarsStore.com website. She's laughing because not only are her servers in a bathroom and she doesn't want them investigated, but she's headed to Puerto Rico and ignoring all of it and saying, well, we had a little setback, but it's no big deal. She's also laughing because she is a hardcore supporter of Monsanto. In fact, she lobbied for them and was part of numerous organizations affiliated with them. That's why we're going to get an update right now from Tammy, Tammy Canal, who is the founder of March Against Monsanto, which has reached millions and millions worldwide, and get a little update on the fight. And then we're going to start talking about some news, such as how the Democrats in Congress refuse to watch videos exposing Planned Parenthood selling aborted babies. Feds want evidence they let Mexican drug cartels buy guns kept quiet. And of course, Alex's premier response and powerful message to Louis Farrakhan. But first, Tammy Canal of March Against Monsanto, how are you doing? Hi, Anthony, I'm doing good, how are you? Great, well, thanks for joining. And thanks first and foremost, a little bit about March Against Monsanto. Why don't you explain to the viewers what March Against Monsanto is and the powerful message on how you really started it? Um, March Against Monsanto is an education and awareness-based organization. We're trying to really uh, let the masses know what's going on with our food supply, the toxic chemicals being used to grow it, and um, Monsanto's collusion with our government uh, that is basically um, selling the people of this country down the river. Right. And I've supported March Against Monsanto for years because I think it's a great group. And really what it is, it's a grassroots movement, which is key. I mean, it's grassroots. I mean, 
You, you are, I believe, a stay-at-home mother, right? And you started yeah. this because you didn't want to give your kids GMO junk, like Dr. McCullough just said. The World Health Organization has already admitted Roundup is causing cancer. It's mega glyphosate on steroids, and that's what's put on all these GMO foods. And you have the audacity, by the way, how dare you, to say that you don't want to eat Monsanto's GMOs. So you started a grassroots movement that's now reached, what, tens and tens of millions worldwide. Your reach on social media is like 50 million a month. I mean, it's just grown massive. Yeah, it's it's really incredible. I think that um, the more people know, they can't go back. Um, and that's really the big point uh, behind the education. Uh, things like the Dark Act uh, that are basically going to happen if we don't stand up and fight. Monsanto spent $30 million to get the House to vote yes on the Dark Act when 94 percent of the people in this country want labeling. And um, I mean, personally, labeling to me is a is a a sad Band-Aid on a severe injury. Labeling doesn't um, solve the problem of the bee crisis, and it doesn't solve the problem of cross-contamination. And it also legitimizes the use of chemicals like Roundup and the newly approved 2,4-D, which is even more of um, uh, glyphosate on steroids, as you put it. So um, we are just trying to educate people um, to, what, to what is happening. And uh, we are doing a, an event in D.C. on October 16th and 17th, and we really would love uh, for the country to come together and descend on our politicians' backyard and make them uncomfortable and let them know we're not going to go quietly in the night. We, we are going to get the change we are demanding. That's exactly right. And March Against Monsanto already has the backing of celebrities and certain politicians and everything like that. But your Food Justice March in D.C. in October is, is going to be super big. I'm already hearing that a number of celebrities are most likely going to be attending and promoting it. And overall, all of this comes down to, I mean, the Dark Act, which would ban GMO labeling, mandatory GMO labeling in the United States, all this comes down to fierce opposition. I mean, what you have done is amazing with your grassroots activism. I mean, what Alex has done with Infowars.com, I mean, it, reach, it reaches, most people say millions. I mean, we're talking millions. He reaches billions with a B. And just with my small natural society website, I mean, we've done so much. We've really, really launched a lot of informational missiles out there. And Tammy, I want to thank you for what you're doing. In your last final closing here, what do you think is going to come in the next five years? Are we going to have some victory? I absolutely. You know, the, the power lies within the people. We are many and they are few. And uh, we will be victorious. I so, agree. We will be victorious. The age of Monsanto is over. Thank you, Tammy. Coming up, we've got more news, more videos, and a message from Alex later on the show. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show, Friday edition, September 4th, 2015. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, in for Alex Jones. He's got a powerful message to Louis Farrakhan coming up in the next segment, so stay tuned. And right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to break down the facade of the mainstream media system right here and right now. And what I'm going to show you is North Korea's mysterious fake town and how that exactly relates to the current media system in the United States. For those who are unaware, on the DMMZ, the Demilitarized Zone in South Korea and North Korea, where there is a, a meeting of about a mile wide between the two countries, there's a lot of insanity that goes on. North Korea has an entire fake town set up, and they call it Propaganda Town. New York Post has an article on it. It's called The Mysterious Fake Town on North Korea's Border. It reads, from the outside, the North Korea village of Kijongdong looks like any other town. Brightly painted houses, schools, daycares, and even a hospital. But on close inspection, it's not all it seems. It says, sitting in the heavily guarded DMZ that separates North and South Korea, Kijongdong is widely referred to as the propaganda village and is believed to be a decoy for lowering South Korean defectors. They just spam constant propaganda in this facade. They say the two-and-a-half-mile-wide DMZ that was set up in 1953 as an armistice to end the Korean War, the town claims to have 200 residents and boasts an image of economic success. That's the key right there. This town, obviously, is completely fake. It is set up to act like North Korea has an amazing economy, and we, they have plenty of food, and everything is amazing. The economy is going to be just fine. In fact, do you know what the North Koreans who would potentially say that Kim Jong-un is not their god and that the economy is totally in ruins would be called, they would be called conspiracy theorists and they would be killed in North Korea. In the United States, we are living in a facade. We are living in a world in which we are told by the media what to think and what to believe, as many of you know. 
This facade in North Korea is so similar to the United States in the sense that if you are to question the reality that is given to you, of course, you would be attacked. You'll be laughed at, you'll be attacked, and you'll be criticized. The reality is, though, that we can escape this facade system and we can know what is really going on. And that's why we here on the Alex Jones Show and what Alex does every single day is cover this news over and over and over again. That's why you have the Dow playing a yo-yo system. There's so much deception going on behind the scenes. It's just like this North Korea facade. And this, this informational outpost on the DMZ, which is the Alex Jones Show and Infowars.com, acts as kind of a tower in on behind enemy lines to kind of sniff out what's going on. If you think about it for a minute and you realize, and what I'm tying this into, that the media acts as this mysterious town to act as if it's huge, act as if it's big, act as if it's the only voice out there. But the truth of the matter is, I would estimate about 70% after speaking to the experts of people, obviously this listening audience, but in people of the United States are fed up with it and they are not buying the lie anymore. What that means is the mainstream media system, like this mysterious fake town in North Korea, is just in shambles. It is nothing more than a facade. And we are crashing through it with a massive informational sledgehammer, just plowing through it over and over and over again. And that, I believe, is the core issue with all this insanity going on. That the media is making you believe and making you think that white people are evil. Kill all the whites. That the Black Lives Matter. It's, it's chaos in the streets. It's insanity. That's the only issue. The immigration issue is the only issue. Trump is bad because he wants to deport illegal immigrants. All of this stuff is manufactured reality. And I want to get on that, get on those subjects right now on the immigration issue. Because as this article talks about, it is now a billion plus dollar industry in the smuggling realm. Smuggling in immigrants is a billion plus dollar industry. They're making billions and billions of dollars. And then we have Jorge Ramos. This is from the Los Angeles Times. Jorge Ramos is on the defensive over his role as journalist and immigration immigrant advocate. After a testy encounter with Donald Trump at a press conference last week, Univision anchor Jorge Ramos has found himself on the defensive, trying to explain how his self-proclaimed position as an advocate for immigration reform does not undercut his role as a journalist. And he's saying, I'm a journalist. I, I, I have no actual activism in this immigration. It was all just me trying to be a true journalist and talk to Trump. And it's just, it's, they act as if you are some type of Satan worshiper for not wanting illegal immigrants in the United States. While also saying we love Hispanic people that come here legally. We love everyone from Mexico that actually goes through and does the test and, and does all that information. I mean, I was speaking to someone from Germany the other day, and they, they came here legally, and they went through all the processes, and they had said to me, what upsets me, and this guy was like literally tearing up, and this happens often, what upsets me is those that ruin it for everyone else. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, it upsets me having to go through all this process to come here legally and bring my family here, he's married now, is to have these illegals running over the border. I mean, making everyone else look bad, making real, true immigrants look bad. I mean, my family has only been here for a couple generations. We came from Italy. We're all horrible, evil people, right? But no, we came here legally and have actually helped input and generate economy. But at the same time, there's hundreds, <laughs> thousands, I guess, of illegal immigrants crossing borders. And what's in other nations in Europe right now, as we speak, Paul Watson's investigating it. And they are just telling them you better bring them water and give them your house or you're a bad person. That's how this ties into the media facade. I don't think that people are buying it. And I also want to talk about a video that we're going to play here of this 911 call or a dispatch report and talk about the insanity in the media and what it results in. The byproduct of this insanity is cops being killed, is Black Lives Matter protesters blocking highways for no reason is shooting and killing white people because they're white is attenuating the fact that black lives matter and not all lives matter. I want to play this video and t really see what happens when the media gets all fired up about these race issues that we should all be celebrating our own lives and humanity as a whole. But when they get all fired up about these race issues, here's the type of thing that happens. Let's play this video. Looks like the mail that called it in assaulted his wife and child, so possibly two patients. 
and he is also threatening suicide. So possibly three patients. They are talking to the subject now. He's outside talking to them.